First of all, I just want to thank you for inviting me here tonight. What a privilege it is to be here with all of you. I love women. I love spending time with women. And uh, I know that God has blessed us in a very special way in friendships and relationships. And I just um, love looking out there at all of your faces and just appreciate each one of you. And uh, just, I know that any one of you could be up here sharing your story, that each one of you have a story to share. Um, but I thank you for allowing me to come and share mine tonight. <clears throat> Is that okay? Is that okay? Sure. <laughs> because I'm going to turn my pages and I'll cover it, so, okay. Um, you know, there's, a, there's so much that I want to share, and so I've given it a lot of thought and I've written it down, but then, um, you know, I want it to be fresh and I want you to hear from my heart, so I'm going to just uh, take a minute to just uh, get settled here, because it's, it's important what the Lord wants to share tonight, and I'm, I'm a little nervous, so uh, just bear with me. When the angel told Mary that she would give birth to our Savior, the Savior of the world, she said, let it be to me according to your word. I'm still learning that that's the response that God wants from each one of us. That's really all he's asking. Our circumstances will be different, yet we are asked to respond the same. It's his story in us. It's our journey with him. We are each so very special to him. So his plan is personal and unique to each one of us. We all have a story to tell. Like I said, every one of you could be standing up here tonight and telling your story. And I would love to hear what you're learning and what God is teaching you. We can each choose to set our sights on a powerful God and simply trust him as he is revealing his will. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it is so worth it. Through this past year, really past five years, I would say, that I've been on a journey, and uh, as I'm continuing on that journey through life, my richest resource is the mountain of faith provided by our God through His Holy Spirit. I have access to this faith, and He has given me I have access to this faith that he has given me when I choose to rest in him. And that's one of the big lessons that I have learned this past year is how to rest in him and allow him to work his, his plan. 1 Chronicles 22, 18 through 19 says, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not given you rest on every side? Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. I learned that part of being prepared is being rested and built up, and that is definitely what the Lord did for me this past year. When I was diagnosed in December with inoperable, incurable, metastasized stage four squamish cervical and lung cancer. That is a mouthful. And my first response to that was, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> and I have no idea why I said that, but um, I think I heard my grandmother say it or something. I don't know, but that was what I said. And um, you know, that has given Rick and I um, just moments of laughter in the middle of tears when, when things were getting pretty tense. He would just remind me of that and just say that to me, and it would kind of lighten the situation. So that was my first response when we were uh, in Dr. McGonigal's office. But my second response was, as we cried and prayed together, Lord, what do you have for us to learn in this? We had already watched Kurt and Jolene learn so much when our baby Kate was diagnosed with cancer when she was eight months old. And um, so we knew that the Lord had things to teach us. And uh, I just prayed that I could go through 
the treatment with half as much joy and grace as our baby Kate did. She was amazing. It was such a privilege to be with her in the hospital room. I was able to go back to Nebraska for two months and just be there. And um, we were roomies and uh, hung out together. And uh, she would wake up in the morning and peek out of her crib and we'd play peekaboo. And she was just amazing. She went through it with a smile on her face. And I do believe that God gives children a special grace when they are going through a childhood illness. Uh, she was just amazing. So um, when I discovered that I had cancer, I just asked the Lord that I could do it half as well as Kate did. And I asked him to please guide us and direct us to the right doctors and to the right treatments. Um, we just saw, as Kurt and Jolene went through it, that the doctors and nurses made such a difference, and uh, as well as their attitude as they went through it. So here is how he answered our prayers. Um, we had eight doctors, I had eight doctors, four clinics, three treatments, and so many wonderful nurses. But um, we just decided to take it one day at a time. And the Lord gave us such peace um, as we went through that process. He truly answered that prayer that I know many of you were praying for me that we would just know and have peace um, concerning the doctors and treatments. I really believe that God worked on my behalf while he was allowing me to rest in him. And I believe that being prepared um, prepared my body for the chemo and radiation that I went through. I, I have never slept so well as I did this past year. I, I truly was able to rest and sleep. I love the idea that uh, in the scripture I read previously about fastening my heart to seeking the Lord so that my life can tell his story of grace and hope and faithfulness. If you've ever been sailing, you know how important it is to fasten the sail so it's not whipping around uselessly in the wind. And it is critical for us to fasten our hearts to him, to our Savior, so that he can guide us through. Sailing has also taught me about a safe harbor, and I've experienced that uh, when Rick and I have gone sailing. And, uh, we took a trip to Victoria and sailed, uh, it's probably been, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago, but um, we were sailing to Victoria and we started on a, on a beautiful day, but by the time we got um, halfway there, it, the storm kind of came up and there was um, waves and it was getting dark and we couldn't just couldn't quite find our way through and we could not find the harbor and so um, Rick radioed the um, a ship that was going by and um, so he was down below looking at the charts and figuring it out and I totally trusted him I was not worried at all um, but I was at the helm and so I was holding on and we kind of went over a bump and I kind of fell backwards and I thought oh I better be holding on here because the last thing we need is for me to be falling overboard while he's down below so so I was holding on and listening to his instructions and we made our way clear and the minute we hit the harbor it was just smooth sailing the water instantly went smooth and I just thought this is what it's going to be like when we go to heaven it's just going to be smooth and um, so as we got situated there um, as I started to <laughs> let go. I had to peel my hands off there. But um, so I, I've learned a lot about many lessons through sailing. But tonight I want to make this point very clear. If you don't hear me say anything else tonight, I want you to know God is good and gracious and faithful, not because he has healed me. He is good and gracious and faithful all the time in every story. He was not caught unaware a year ago when I was told that I only had 18 months to two years to live. He was there with me and he assured me he would take care of my family. I was ready to go home. Heaven has never been more real to me. He was there and he was, I knew he would be just on the other side of the veil to take my hand. I know that heaven will be everything that he promised and so much more than I can ever imagine. You know, there's not one of us here that has any guarantees of tomorrow. So let's just be ready for the day when there's no more tears, no more pain, no more fear. He will be there. 
He assured me he would go before me in every appointment, in every procedure, that I would never be alone. There was a nurse at the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance that um, met with me the first time that I um, went there for my internal radiation. And I was sitting in the waiting room, and I was reading my Bible, and she came out and she said, oh, well, I see that you are reading your Bible, so I want to share with you something really unique and special. She said, normally I don't know who my patients are until the day of, but because of the type of procedure that you're having, I actually got your name last night. She said, I prayed for you all night, and um, I prayed for you this morning, and I'm just excited to let you know that the Lord is here with us today. He was so faithful to do that so many times, to just put people in my path that would just give me peace. Uh, when I went through 28 days of um, radiation in Cedar Woolly, that was another experience that the Lord just assured us um, that that was the right place for us to be. And he provided transportation. I had this amazing Christian woman that came and picked me up every day, took me to Cedar Woolly, waited for me, brought me home. And when we walked into that clinic, there was Christian music playing at the hospital, and our doctor was a Christian. And just so many times, the Lord just gave us that extra assurance that he was there. During radiation, no one can be in the room with me, and yet it was at those times that I felt his peace and presence the most. When I had to go to Seattle for um, the internal radiation, um, that procedure was the first one, uh, just because they were setting up all the details and so forth. It ended up taking about eight hours that I was just um, having to lay flat on this table. And um, they gave me kind of a mild sedative to sort of help me relax. Um, and then the nurse, uh, when they were ready to do the procedure with the radiation, everyone had to leave the room. But she was kind of monitoring my heart rate and my respirations. And when she came back into the room, she said, what were you doing during that time? Were you meditating or what were you doing? And she said, I have never had anyone be so calm and at peace during this procedure. And I said, I was praying and the Lord was with me and I know that and uh, I don't have any reason to fear. So I had many opportunities to share what the Lord was doing. Um, and so I'm, I'm thankful for those opportunities. God is in the details and he knows my needs. When I was diagnosed a year ago in December, uh, then I began treatments in January, and I kept a journal um, during that time, which proved to be very helpful as I was uh, preparing to share for you this evening. On January 16th, the day that I was having my port put in, and for those of you that don't know what that is, it's this little gadget that's here that they use to put the chemo in and draw blood and all those fun things. Anyway, the day that I was having that put in, um, Rick was in the hospital in Everett, having his heart checked, uh, and they discovered that he had a heart virus. So that's another chapter for another time, but I bring it up to share with you the lesson that the Lord impressed upon me that day. And I wrote this in my journal. What has the Lord shown me with the dual purpose of sharing the same lesson with someone else? And my answer I wrote that day, one year ago, was this. For me, it is to know the true, consistent source of my peace, strength, hope, and forgiveness. Stop looking to others for what I can only find in Christ. This is not to say that we can't be there for one another, just be careful of unrealistic expectations. Rick could not be with me that day, and I couldn't be with him. And yet God could, and he always will be. So I encourage you to look first to Christ. He is more than enough. Do you believe, as I do, that he had you in mind a year ago? He knew that we would be here, together here tonight, and he has been preparing us for this opportunity. So much of the preparation required of us is to hope and wait and trust in him. Bethany Dillon wrote a song, and I just love the words. It says, God, you can do more in my waiting than I in my doing could ever do. February 16th, I wrote that I had a tough week, and yet God brought comfort and peace through the storm. 
This gift came through in so many ways, and I cherish and rejoice at every victory, big or small. God, you are the source of all good things. So tonight I'd like to share with you just the practical ways that Jesus showed himself to me this past year. I remember a really special friend coming by and making cookies with me, and we went for a walk. And it was just a simple thing, but I felt so much better after she came. In the eight months um, while I was going through chemo and radiation, there was not one day that I did not receive a card in the mail for eight months, for over eight months. I received a card, at least one card, every single day. And I know many of them were from you and from my family and friends and neighbors and people that I didn't know, but they had heard about me and were praying for me. And that might not seem like a big deal to you, but I am such a card person. I, I can spend hours just looking at cards at his place. And um, when I worked at his place, my favorite thing to do was to put out the new cards. And I just, I love cards. And so the Lord knew that about me. And he did not forget that. And I had my walls and windows plastered with cards. And I have a box full of these cards. And I'm just... Very thankful that the Lord pays attention to those details and He knows our hearts and He knows what we need. When I lost my hair, I had friends that joined me at the MAC unit for a hair brushing out party. I have 11 grandchildren, and so visits from my children and grandchildren truly were the best medicine. I would go for a whole day without thinking about cancer. Um, my son, uh, who lives in Nebraska, um, sent me an iPad, and for me that is like, oh, high tech. <laughs> but he taught me how to uh, FaceTime, so that because he just felt like he was disconnected and he was so far away. So the day that I got some wigs, I was at the MAC unit, so I tried on wigs, and, and all three of my grandchildren were there, and Kurt and Jolene, and I'm trying on wigs for them, and I trusted them, because I knew Jolene would be honest with me, and um, my granddaughter Claire said, when I put on the right one, she said, Nana, that's the one, so <laughs> it was just a fun day. They actually moved to Washington for two months to help me through my treatments, Family and friends were with me at every chemo, at every treatment, and uh, we even got to celebrate with clown noses at a party on my last chemo. My wonderful church family, and many of you that know me, know that I love tea, and I love tea parties, and I love soup, and so um, every Tuesday there would be a fresh pot of soup at my house when I came home from chemo. And we called that Soup and Tea Tuesdays. Um, right uh, early on when I was diagnosed, I have five sisters, and so they organized a um, phone system, so I would just have to call one sister, and then they would call and uh, let everyone know what was going on, and, and that they could be praying for me. So I knew that at a moment's notice, I would have all of my sisters praying for me. Um, I'm leaving on Thursday, to go to Portland uh, for my annual train trip. I, last year was the first year I, I missed it for, I think, over 15 years. And uh, it's just nice to be able to go and be with those that loved me first. So I'm really looking forward to that. I choose to be in the shadow of his mighty hand. Isaiah 65, 24 tells us that it is God's desire to be our God, to have a close relationship that brings us to this place that before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. Jeremiah 33, 12 and 13, God speaks of a dwelling place where the shepherds cause their flocks to lie down, and the flock shall pass under the shepherd's hand as he counts them. I love that, I love that. Um, when I was in Nebraska, um, I can remember just laying in bed, um, listening to Catherine as she was sleeping, and um, just the 23rd Psalm would just go through my head over and over. And um, that gave me such peace and such reassurance. He counts me as I pass under his hand. Can you picture that? 
And I would just literally lay there and picture that, that he would count me as I was passing under his hand. He wouldn't forget about me. He wouldn't miss me. He would count me. When I couldn't sleep or I was afraid, I would just meditate on that thought. I would picture my shepherd counting me under his hand. I've had so many precious moments with my Lord to behold his presence and his word this past year. To behold means to be in the moment and to hold on to what you are about to hear. Lamentations 3, 24 through 26 says, The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Psalms 27 says, I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Sometimes the strength is in the waiting. I claim that he is a God of infinite grace beyond measure. And it's through his strength that I face life. It is his strength that covers my weakness. I truly could have been so overwhelmed with the news and with the decisions that we had to make. But truly, God gave me peace and comfort from day one. Like I said, I slept so well this past year. I, I really didn't lay awake worrying and wondering. He just kept assuring me that he most definitely has a specific plan for me and wants me to rest in it. I serve a creative God who blends the beautiful and the difficult, the tears with his blessings, and the joys even with the unknown. He makes all this into a life unequal to anything that the world could ever offer. Exodus 6, 1, and the Lord said to Moses, and he said I could put my name in there too. So it says, Debbie, now you will see what I will do. This summer I was so busy enjoying my family here that I just didn't even worry about a, a scan that I had um, in Cedro Woolley, and I hadn't heard any results, and I just, I wasn't even worried about it. And uh, so then when we went to Seattle, uh, when I met with uh, Dr. Coe for the first time, he assumed that I already knew the results, and I didn't, and um, he said, well then let me share it with you. <laughs> so he got out his computer and he said, I don't even know why you're here. You were healed before you ever got here. So, <laughs> so um, he said, um, you are unique and amazing in the way you've responded. And um, he said, there's really no place to put this because he said, I expected to see a frail, sick woman when you walked in the door. He said, but you are not. You are strong and healthy. And uh, so we need to kind of need to rethink what we're going to do here. So that was, that was great news. That was great news. Know therefore that the Lord your God is a faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Wouldn't it be good to know that the journey that you have been led through and all that you have learned along the way is all that is required of you? Nothing more, nothing less. That is what is going to prepare you for all seasons. And that's what I feel like the Lord has done as he's walked us through um, just all the things that we've had in life, but kind of especially this past five years, we've had two granddaughters that have been very sick, and then with my news, um, you know, you kind of are just, you can picture those moments that are frozen in time. I can still picture the day that we got the call from Kurt that Kate had cancer, and I can still picture that day when, um, when we received our news. But the Lord does not forget us. And I have asked him that he would help me not to forget all that he has taught me because I do believe he's prepared me for this season of my life. And he's given me so many opportunities to share with neighbors and friends um, that just stop and ask to see how I'm doing. Um, last week I had blood work and an appointment with Dr. Wong. Uh, 
at the math unit. And you'd think by now that, you know, it, this would just be a breeze. I, you know, I've been through this, and yet I was kind of dreading this appointment. I just, I didn't want to go in here any good, any bad news. I think that was it. I just, because I, I kept asking myself, why am I, why am I doing this? I was trying to think of every excuse that I could to not go to this appointment. And, um, and then the Lord just kind of sat me down and said, remember what I told you. They're not going to tell you anything that I don't already know. I am already there. I will walk through this with you. So it's going to be okay. So I went to the appointment, and Dr. Wong is amazing, and I appreciate how careful she is. She's kind of reserved and doesn't get too excited about things. She's pretty even keel, totally opposite of Dr. Ko, who is just out there and ready to rejoice, you know, at every victory. But she's kind of reserved, which I appreciate. She's kind of a balance, and I want to keep her on my team as well. But um, when we went over the blood work, she was more positive than she's ever been and explained everything to me and my blood work was looking great and, and uh, explained all of it to me and said um, you know that it looked really good and my cancer markers were good and my white count was good and um, I said well it's so good to to hear the results of the test backing up how I'm feeling because I've been feeling so great and she said, well, and it's good for me to see you and see how well you're feeling because it really does support uh, what we're seeing in the blood work. So she said, do you want to keep this report? And I said, yes, I think I'm going to frame it. And she said, well, you just keep doing that for the next two years. And that's the first time she said anything that positive. So, you know, there's no guarantees. Like I said, the cancer could come back, but I'm ready for that. If it happens, I know the Lord will be there. But for now, I'm just taking it one day at a time. The Hebrew word for wait and hope means those who stand right in the middle of the craziness, in the midst of pain and chaos, in the valley of the shadow of death, and they don't gloss over it, and they're dealing with the hard stuff in life, yet they continue to trust and wait and hope. I am learning to choose to stand right in the middle of every moment that God gives me and know that he has a purpose for me today. Every day when I wake up, I want to ask the Lord, what do you have for me today? I'm going to keep believing in hope because his promise still stands today forever for you and me. Even when I think I can't go on, he is everything that I need. When Rick and I work out in the yard or in the garden and I have a young plant um, that's uh, a young shoot, I might ask Rick to help me stake it up so he'll get a piece of bamboo and, and stake it up for me. Well, God does that with our hope. He secures it to a firm stake of his truth. It is his truth and promises that we lean on and they will not fail. Amen. Our hope is well placed in the Lord who keeps truth forever. It's my desire to pass on to you this source of hope and substance. The greatest miracle that's ever been accomplished in my life is the healing and restoring of my broken, sinful soul. For eternity, I am saved by His grace. Fifty years ago, I went to summer camp, and my counselor, Jennifer, was a missionary home on furlough, and I remember one, another one of those moments frozen in time. I remember sitting on the bunk with her and praying and just trusting the Lord that he would be my savior. Picture the God of creation. His son Jesus was right beside him in Genesis 1.1. And then the word became flesh. We celebrate this season because we acknowledge that Jesus our savior came to earth as a baby. Think of the cost of that decision. He was there at the right hand of God. He was God, and yet he chose to come and walk on this earth for us. He completed his journey on earth. He died and rose again to cover my sins and to give me hope. Given enough time, this body will fail me again. 
It's only temporary. The source of my strength is God's strength. The focus of my faith is His forever faithfulness. And the depth of my security is in Jesus' everlasting love. Eternity is far greater. It's a far greater reality than this temporary short breath of time. Jesus will call us home in His perfect time, and we will be together with the Lord. The reason that we walk through pain is so that we will pray for strength. The reason for that strength is so that we will not lose hope. The reason for hope is so that we can tell the world. And the reason for it all is so that we will long for home. I have learned so much about God through this journey, and I pray that I will continue learning all that he has for me. Two weeks ago, Rick and I were asked to light the first Advent candle of hope. In a moment of mercy, hope took hold. Romans 5 tells us that hope does not disappoint. I am longing for that permanent peace of being fully in his presence. I, I really mean this, but I would love for any of you to call me to meet for coffee, and I would love to hear your story and the journey that you are on, that you are on and all that you are learning. I love you. Thank you again for this opportunity, and Merry Christmas.